So everyone and welcome to a more simple and a quicker version of a siege level design and today I'm going to talk about something that I always see people make very very big mistakes and it always in one direction which is level size. Now when I say they always make mistakes in one direction the question is do they make levels too big or do they make them too small? Obviously they make them too big. I've never actually seen a level once in any hat in time custom map that was too small. Maybe you can say it doesn't have enough content, but you can't say it was too small in that sense. And when I say too big or too small, I don't mean the amount of content that it has. What I do mean is how much are you spending your time just walking around from point A to point B without actually doing any gameplay? How much time do you spend just taking that control stick flubbing it forwards and like pressing A once or twice and how much time do you spend actually engaging in meaningful gameplay. Now in order to illustrate some of that I got a little uh, surprise for you guys. Holy sh- that's loud. Sorry guys. Uh, I'm gonna think it's not that loud in post. So I have a little thing that I did here. I very quickly threw something together in editor. And I'm going to show you what I mean. First off, I'm going to have a section that I'm going to play right here. Okay, I'm going to start the section wall jumping up this. Quite a lot of wall jumping. I'm not actually doing anything other than pressing the A button right now. That's all I'm doing is pressing the A button. Okay, once we're up here, I'm just holding right right now. I'm just, I'm just pressing right. Whoops. I'm just pressing right. I didn't have to press right there for a second, so I fell off. So I'm pressing right. And I press A once. That's that's the entire section. Now it took me like ten or so wall runs. I jumped over like five springs. I didn't actually do that much interesting. I just for the wall jumping, I just pressed A every now and then. For the uh, springs, I just held right. That was about it. And it also took me quite a long time to just walk up to the entire thing to begin with. Like look at how long it takes for me of just holding forward until I even reach the part where the gameplay starts. So now imagine I have the entire section and we're gonna make everything smaller, okay? We're gonna make everything more, more concise. So let's say we start here. First off, we're at the obstacle in like half a second, okay? Next stop. I mean, the actual gameplay that I did here is I pressed A twice, certainly, but it only happened for like one second or so, how long I'm pressing A. And then we go up here and we're already at our uh, destination. I've pretty much done the exact same gameplay, but this time I haven't been doing the exact same thing for like 10 seconds at a time. I've only been doing the exact same thing for like one or two seconds at a time. And if you think about it, let's say I'm playing the game for five seconds. If I'm playing the game for five seconds over on the big area, I'm not actually doing anything important. I'm just pressing A every now and then, holding right. That's the entire gameplay I'm doing in five seconds. In here, the entire gameplay that happened in like five seconds was I walked up to here, I sprinted up to here, turned around, jumped, jumped, did that, maybe did a dive, maybe even. And that's the entire gameplay in five seconds that I've done over there. A lot more stuff has happened. I've done a lot more interesting, engaging ideas. And another really cool thing that happens, I didn't plan this, but a really cool thing that happens if you make sure that gameplay is more concise and more meaningful is stuff like this just very naturally happens where you just start speedrunning. You can start, oh, I can break this, I can do this, I can do this as well. Oh my god, I can, you can now also start thinking about the level in a more interesting way. Start breaking stuff. Your stuff is more concise. Cool. Cool. Very small, very simple little uh, example that I thought I'd try and show you guys. To see, to show you what I mean with stuff is too big most of the time. Most of the time when you see a level, uh, like, like go into any important, like Star Lane Stroll is a good example. Go into Star Lane Stroll for example and see how much meaningful stuff you're doing in like the any amount of gameplay. Like take, let's let's say you play the, that stage for like 20 seconds and take note of what you're actually doing. And then take something, for example, after story, uh, chapter 5.5, go into the chapter where you're in the forest and then just run around the forest and then also take into, uh, also imagine how much you're actually doing in 20 seconds and you'll see just how big the difference is. I'm not trying to shit on Starling Stroll. I think Starling Stroll is an, is an all right map for, uh, I think it was like, a, LC is like first or second map, or maybe in first map. I mean, it's an all right map, and definitely big improvements happened in map creation after that, but I think it's a really cool example to uh, compare that to something that was released way later, like After Story. 
which in terms of size, I mean the actual size of the level in Starling's Troll, I mean it is fairly big, but like I said, the actual gameplay they're doing is not that interesting. But in Afterstory, for example, the forest area, it's not actually that big. But you spend a lot more time in that area also because there's a lot more stuff to do. The actual density of gameplay is higher, but the physical density of the stage is actually not that big. It's like it's, it's, I mean, the actual physical size of the level is not that big. It's, it's fairly small, actually. If you stand in the middle of that forest, you can see the entire thing very easily from just entering the stage. You can already see, like, oh, that, that's where the... I, I can already see that over there is going to be the end of the stage. And everything is just a lot more tightly packed. And I think that, that it's not really... That's not what I kind of want to get across in a video like this. Which is like... Whenever you see any sort... I mean, just play your level. I think that's the best way to do it. Just play your level. Or whenever you create your level, think about how, how much stuff is actually happening. How much stuff is actually happening in any given point of time. I'm not trying... They're not telling you that you should make sure that you're slamming the controller every single time anything happens and you're pressing like you're playing with like 5,000 actions per minute or something but just make sure that there's no big downtime in gameplay there shouldn't be any downtime in gameplay that makes you bored of course there's a lot if you have a super difficult map where you are playing like 5,000 APM maybe you have like one or two small areas where you're you get to a platform or something, and the platform you get to is a checkpoint there, and then maybe you can just sit there for just a second. You don't need more than that. You don't need more than just a little platform where nothing happens, where you're safe, where there's a checkpoint, and then you can have some downtime on your own time if you want to. But apart from that, if you're actually doing the platforming, why should I ever have a plat- why should I ever enjoy any platforming where I'm just pressing the same button like 20 times and it takes me like 20 seconds to do something or I'm just holding forwards. Also another thing you can do is if you have your level, see if there's a place in your level where you can just walk forwards or walk in one direction yeah. with minimal button presses, like maybe A once or now and then, and see how much actually happens. Because I have seen a bunch of levels that I thought were actually quite good, but there were a few places in that level where I could hold forwards and actually just run forwards without anything happening, anything interesting, no enemies, no jumps, nothing, for like 10 seconds. That's way too big. If you have a level like that, what you do is you take the level, select everything, and then you do the slider for size, and then you scale everything down, you just scale everything down, and then you do some after work to make sure that the gameplay still functions. And that's, there you go. Now, of course, it is possible to make maps too small. Like, let's say I went to go back to my example, and all I did was I jumped forward once, off the wall, onto the spring, and then we're done. Actually, that's, it's not hard, it's actually, that's not even too small. I think it's too small. It's actually not that easy for me to think of something that is too small if you have the same amount of gameplay. It would be removing gameplay or rather you have something where you can very easily see you could just very easily have expanded this and added more gameplay to it like there's not enough gameplay there. that's what i think is too small there's not enough gameplay here which is different from there's not much content there and for example the thing that i showed you right there there was not enough content right there it was just uh two walls a spring and a platform whoop de doo but i think gameplay wise you're actually doing something like i said you run up to it you turn around you jump once or twice you get on top of it get on the spring jump over dive onto the platform there's actually stuff happening so that wouldn't there's, that, that stuff that i showed you wasn't even too small that was i think the size that it should be so yeah i think that's mostly what i want to say i could just ramble on about this but there's not really any more important anything important that i want to say at this point other than yeah just keep in mind that you should always make sure that there's no lull in the gale in the gameplay where nothing important is happening for a lot of time in a row something like that english is hard whatever that was that see you guys next time